Tonight, I'm so incredibly excited. We have uh, an amazing cast to play yet another one shot uh, of Dragon Bane for you all. We've got the man himself GMing this, the one and only Mr. Dragon Bane. You've seen him on some of the other videos uh, that uh, that I've put out. Uh, you, I got to meet him at uh, uh, at uh, Origins, so we thought it was only fitting to bring him on and, and do a, do a session here of uh, Dragon Bane. We also got some very very impressive uh, guest players. So uh, without further ado, we're going to uh, get going here in just a moment. We're going to be playing Dragon Bane Tower of Size. Welcome to Victory Condition Gaming. My name is Doug. Today on the show, we're playing Dragon Bane. This is a game from Free League Publishing. Uh, it's actually a new edition of a game that they had out there uh, back in the in the 80s. Uh, it was called uh, Drakar Demon or something like that. Uh, I'm sure I mispronounced it. But uh, yeah, we're really excited to uh, be playing this again on the show. If you enjoyed Dragon Bane and all that, hit the like button down below. If you're coming across the channel for the very first time, hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you as a subscriber and be part of our YouTube community. Uh, we've tried to put out all sorts of different content, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited to uh, keep promoting and encouraging and supporting tabletop RPG players, uh, designers, publishers, players, all that. Uh, without further ado, let's bring on Mr. Dragon Bane himself, Jonathan. Mr. Dragon Bane, what is going on tonight? Just living the dream, man. Just living the dream. Trying to play TTRPGs all day long. <laughs> I, I'm super pumped. You're going to be playing this on the show uh, yeah. for the first time. You're making your VCG debut along with the the, the other cast mes members uh, tonight. Yeah. Um, we've we've met we met officially at Origins. At you, Origins. Yeah, before Dragon Bane came out, and you just are all in on this game, and I'm super excited to uh, to uh, have you on the show. And of course, you'll be at uh, plenty of conventions going forward, uh, showcasing conventions. Dragon Bane. So I, I hope uh, if anybody is at uh, uh, let's see, you're you're going to be at uh, Game Hole Con, yep. PAX Unplugged. Yep. Uh, is there any other any other? Uh, 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 I'll be, well, I mean, I have my own small one that we put on with Nerd Louisville here in Louisville, Kentucky called Nerd Luvia. Uh, this year it's Viking themed. It's going to be November 4th and 5th at Bellarmine University in case anybody wants to come out. Very cool. Very cool. Well, speaking of gaming conventions, mm. is, yeah, see how I did that? Put a little segue right there. It's <laughs> really super smooth. Let's bring on, uh, Michael from the RPG Academy. Michael, what's going on? I am freaking out i'm so excited right now i have been wanting to play this game for months and months and i just basically went to the internet and begged someone to run a game for me and not only did i find someone i found mr dragon bane to run a game for me like it doesn't get any right? better than that I, no no pressure though jonathan no pressure hey this is like i said this is session 76 i'm just 300 hours over playing this game i think we can handle this i think we can sure, handle sure. it sure uh, my question is for Michael. Michael, are you are you uh, tired from hitting that F? What is it, the F four button, the refresh button on that Kickstarter, or what? Uh, I'm I'm very tired for other reasons, but oh, yes. Okay. Um, so speaking of gaming conventions, on the same weekend, weekend, uh, unfortunately, I was a scheduling faux pas. We I run a gaming convention with a bunch of people called a Catacon. It's based off of the name of our RPG Academy podcast, and it is that same weekend, uh, November 3rd, 4th, and 5th in Dayton, Ohio, and we just wrapped up uh, last night our mm -hmm. Kickstarter, which was the best ever. We get re raised, raised the most money ever, most backers mm -hmm. ever, exceeded goal by like, you know, $4,000, which for us is huge. Uh, I'm absolutely riding that high right now. I'm so excited. <laughs> Well, con congratulations i'm super excited for you I, I love how conventions there's certain certain like gaming conventions that are just coming back in full force and it's nice to see uh your, your convention be one of them I, I i'll let everybody know that i i actually backed your kickstarter at the corporate level so if folks are interested in coming I, i'll be there so yeah, come, you'll be there in. i'm that's awesome i cannot wait uh, I'm super excited to, to to see your community that you've built uh, over these last few, you know, actually, how many years have it, has it been going on? It's been so, going on for a while, right? The, our numbering system is a little weird. Technically, this is our 11th event, wow. 10th year, 8th in person, okay. uh, and 7th at that convention center. 
Very cool. Very cool. Well, congratulations. And uh, I'm excited. And if anybody uh, is interested in, in uh, you know, checking out more of Michael's content, go to the RPG Academy. Uh, I'm sure you'll you'll uh, give them a follow and subscribe and all that. Uh, right. Michael does all sorts of. We don't do that there. part. We're terrible about like we never tell people to like and subscribe. I oh, assume if they like, that. they'll like. If they want to subscribe, they will. But yeah, we I do all kinds of games. The though. video, like I always do it at the end of the video. I no, forget. no, you got to do it early on. That's I that's, never that's, do it at all. So oh but, well, I mean, yeah, I guess you're way that's, more successful that's an... than me. I should probably do what you do. But but yeah, we we run a game called Sample Adventures where we play test new systems, and that's how I ran. I never played Dragonborn. I ran Dragonborn, and I had so much fun that I'm like. Okay, now I need to play it, and that's again how we kind of got to here. Sure. sure. All right, let's. Uh, that's mo that's some of our cast. Let's also bring on Brian and Kaylee. Indeed. Brian, Kaylee. Hey, what is going on? Hey Thank there. you guys so much for coming on. I appreciate y'all coming in and being a part of this cast. Thank you very much. This is my uh, second time playing. I was in Michael's first game of playing Dragon Bane, Michael. Yes. Yes. If you pronounce your con name right, you can pronounce the game right. No. I'm from Kentucky. I can't say anything right. <laughs> Point. It's all good. It's all good. I'm, uh, I'm really super psyched to be here. Um, excited to get to play at your table, Mr. Dragon Bane, and to play on your channel. Um, it, this is great. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I played a, a one shot previously of Dragon Bane and very excited to, to give it a spin again. Um, so. Thanks for welcoming me. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, at this point, I think I'm just going to, you know, condense my show into one great big ball and then throw it over Jonathan, a.k.a. Mr. Dragon Bane's way. There you go, my friend. It's now yours. Take the ball and run with it. It's your show. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, and also, thank everybody for, you know, here to play. Uh, as you can see, we've got Squints, the Dwarven Mentalist. We have Bliss, the Mallard Thief. And here we go. I, I like to do names, and sometimes I cannot pronounce them myself. Uh, so we're just going to go with Silk Tongue, the Elf Merchant. Uh, and then, of course, we've got Baston, the Wolfkin Fighter. And tonight we are playing the Tower of Size. It's actually become one of my favorite adventures uh within the adventure book the adventure itself is a lot of fun um let me go ahead and read the excerpt for it uh the tower of sighs out of the cold mist of the haunted marshes rises the ruins of a mighty tower built at the time of the dragon empire as an out old outpost against the wilderness uh specifically the nightkin the orcs and the goblins after the fall of the empire, the tower served as a meeting place for warring orc clans until a terrible massacre made them abandon the site. Now the tower is haunted by the sighing, by the wailing spirits of slain orcs. No one in their right mind ever goes there. Uh, not until the word of great treasure is moved throughout the misty veil until treasure though is may not be what it is rumored to be and that's kind of that's kind of like the when you're talking about the adventure that's kind of what you you give your players and as our players are now heading from outskirt the little town within the misty veil they are making several days trek to the haunted marshes again because they are trying to get to the tower of size where there is rumored to be treasure uh, so let's go ahead and get to our players and let's go ahead and you know each each character sheet has a small description in the top right but i will allow you all to give as much description about your characters as you wish let's go ahead and start with the man himself Baston Bloodjaw. All right. Um, I'm, I'm playing uh, Baston uh, Bloodjaw. I am a young wolfkin fighter. And uh, it looks like I'm it's like I'm scared and wiry because you know I'm I'm you know I've been not fighting pretty much since you know since I was an infant. Um, I, I'm very loyal to my friends, but of course I once uh, anything kind of pops up that uh, I don't like. I'm very, very uh, 
flip the switch and I just become me menacing. Um, I always try to look nice. I feel like, uh, and I always wear a flag fragrant perfumes. So I kind of equate this to me being like a teenager wearing like super nice clothes <laughs> to impress everybody. And since I kind of got that dog smell going on, I, I just mm. kind of spray myself with that Axe body spray all the time, like teenagers do every so often. <laughs> so I'm like that, uh, you know, that wolfkin that just kind of tries to tries to mask his uh, his dog scent uh, and uh, by wearing uh, all sorts of perfumes. And but uh, I'm here with my my friends. I'm fiercely loyal to them, and I want to make sure that uh, nothing ill happens to them. And and I'm ready to to defend them at all costs. One could say that is honorable. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, let's go ahead and jump with Squints, the Dwarven Mentalist. All right. So Squints is uh, kind of thin, uh, kind of like ripped for like a dwarf, you know? So if you if flip shirt, six packs, maybe even an eight pack. <laughs> uh, bald has uh, the big sort of uh, handlebar mustache and a... a tightly sort of waxed very straight and pointy silver beard so the mustache and beard are both silver uh he has had some sort of um, accident and there's like some burn scars on the right side of his face just in the eye area and so it, that's one of the reasons why his eye his right eye is closed pretty tightly that's where his nickname comes from uh his left eye is covered with a patch that has a, sil a blue sapphire kind of Hoped or worked into that patch as well. Uh, the clothes he wears are very fine. They're like silken. Um, and he carries a staff with a blue gold globe kind of unwrapped around a thing like Gandalf staff. But instead of a, a white glowing rock, it's a blue orb. Okay. Okay. Uh, excellent. 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 Let's jump down to Bliss, our Mallard Thief. Well, Bliss San... I'm going to try and pronounce the name. It's mm. difficult, but Blissendina Fineblade is a young mallard thief uh, who keeps on the move. She likes to move from place to place because then when people find things missing uh, in her wake, she's not around to be blamed for it. But uh, most of her friends understand that that's really something she can't quite help. Uh, she is a small mallard. She's a young woman. Uh most likely, the most noticeable thing about her is she has an, two affectations. She wears a flowing cape that has a peacock feathered headdress, which is actually almost half again as tall as she is. <laughs> but she also, uh, in complete deference to her parents and everyone else in the mallard genre, genre? No, that's not the word. Mm -hmm. The mallard communities, uh, she dyes her bill black mm. that way you can't be seen at night i like that i, like, I do that, i like that a lot kind you of like so point, much that the, your stuff just fell over it, it, it really did it really did uh while i fix that silver tongue the elf merchant please take it away absolutely so um i am an elf uh young woman i have long blonde hair with braids um if you look at me uh you will notice that my uh, that my gaze is some have described it as piercing or steely. Um, mm -hmm. I, most people would describe me as striking, but um, uh, I don't necessarily fill people with um, a, a, a feeling of, of friendliness. Um, I am a merchant, and, and um, I've recently uh, made a couple of questionable business decisions. Um, if some treasure were to come my way, it might uh, help me out of a jam that I've got myself. Well, it sounds like we know who is highly interested within the treasure. Uh, all right. Well, let's go ahead and jump in. Um, again, you all are adventurers from the town of Outskirt. Um you know, the, the, the town of Outskirt is really the only place that you all have that kind of resembles home within the Misty Vale. Um, there is no other spot where, you know, people just, dare I say, thrive. Um, but, you know, the, the uh, place of interest for you, the Tower of Size within the Haunted Marshes, it's several days trek. Um, and we're going to go ahead and pick up right outside of the haunted marshes. Um, I need 
somebody with the best bushcraft to roll some bushcraft, please. Now, for those that don't know, within Dragon Bane, this is a roll under system, okay? So you're, it's a d20, roll under. So if your stat is a 12, you want to make a 12 or lower. If it's a 13 or higher, you fail the roll. I, I, I have a pretty five. decent bushcraft. What, what do you have? It's squints. 14. Ooh, better than mine. Squints All right. You. So despite my uh, sort of flowing silken robes, I'm actually kind of at ease of the woods. I've done a lot of research. I've read a lot of books. I may not have practical experience, but uh, I've, I've, I've read that in a book somewhere. <laughs> um, however, that book I read was out of date because I got a 19. <laughs> oh, no. You know, I'm glad you said that. You said a 19. Everybody, let me know when you roll a dragon or a demon. Again, in this system, because it's a d20 roll under, dragons are your ones because we want the critical ones, Okay. Uh, the critical 20s, those are going to be your demons. You don't want a demon. Or do you? Sothmog mm. will always accept you. Uh, so 19, yes. As, as you all have started to venture into uh, the haunted marshes, you can see the Tower of Size at a distance. You can see it's on this bright red rock um, just coming straight out of the ground, and on top of it is this mighty tower. Now, you're at a distance. You can see it. But the path through the haunted marshes, it goes right, goes left. Um, you know, there, there's no specific one path as there's multiple paths. And you kind of start, you're like, I got this. I got there. Come on, kind of fo follow me kind of thing. And you start oh, it's, leading. It's like, obvious it's that way. I mean, <laughs> come on. Exactly. Exactly. Unfortunately, you start like going off to the right too far. Yeah. Um, I need somebody else to roll me a bushcraft, please. Bliss. Yeah, Bliss. What do you okay. What do you have there, <laughs> Bliss? Ten. So we'll give it a shot. Exactly ten. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, I mean, as you all start going too far right, you start questioning squints, and you're thinking to yourself, mm, "This doesn't feel right." You see a path that starts to lead to the left, and you just kind of let's go this way. Squints, do you have your eye patch over the bad the bad eye or the good eye? I'll I'll lift it up and look at my book. Oh, yeah, I have the book upside down. Sorry. Probably do better if you were upside down. It does help sometimes. Go well, that okay. way. All right. Uh, so yeah, you start to lead more towards the left, um, and and you kind of come to a crossroads where it's like left, right, left, right, but. Despite uh, Bliss, as you're kind of leading the party, you, you seem to be getting closer towards this large red rock with, again, the tower atop. Um, somebody go ahead and roll me an awareness. That was a dwarven right, which is a left. I just, I forgot to, oh. I forgot to account for that. Uh, okay. That makes perfect sense then. Being the only dwarf in the party, I could see how everybody got misconstrued. Yeah. I'm sorry, you said awareness on that one? I have a seven, so. <laughs> I have a ten. Five. All right. All right. Well, I'll like roll. Silk tongue. Fourteen. Not so Ooh. great. Oh. We are doing great. I mean, so far, so great. This seems to be a normal adventuring party. <laughs> it, it, it truly does. In fact, I find with the bad rolls, just role play becomes better. Um... Strangely enough, though, um, as you all are continuing along the path, you all don't happen to notice it at first, but, um, excuse me, out of the bushes jumps two people, small humanoid males. Um, hey, what, what, what are y'all doing? What, what are, are y'all following us? says the one that, uh, if you're looking at the screen, the one on the left, who looks a little bit more Weasley. Yes, we're definitely following you. Because you have bread. <laughs> he, he smacks the one next to him. Fetter, I knew people were following us. Why do you got to be so loud? You, you see this kind of interaction between the two of them almost as if they 
they've been together for a long time. It, it kind of you kind of had that sense. Um, but again, he looks at you. This time he pulls out his short sword. Y'all better stop following us. Uh, y'all, y'all go down a different path. We're, we're go down a different path. I'm gonna look over at uh, Baston. Are they twins? Um, they kind of smell like twins. <laughs> I, I would like to attempt to steal a loaf of bread from the one that has not drawn the short sword. Okay. Well, as as you all I are kind of slide around to the side. Go ahead and. Let's see here. Roll me a stealth to sneak to the side as Squints is talking to him with Beston right there. And I, I do want to state that I can't do voices. Again, I'm from Kentucky. I barely speak English, but my character sounds exactly like Jason Statham. So oh, anytime absolutely. I'm talking, no, yes. just imagine that's <laughs> uh, the voice you're hearing. Michael, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. You didn't even have to say right it. Up. I was just like, immediately. Like, I'll, I'll do that a lot. Oi! Just Okay. <laughs> Sorry, anyways, no. Haley, please continue. Uh, I got a two. Ooh. That sounds like a success to me. A very good success against my 14. Yeah, and uh, along this path that you all were walking along, um, there were bushes. Uh, and it just, like, they just pop right out of the bush, almost as if they were, like, just kind of waiting there or something like that. But, um, yeah, go ahead and roll me a sleight of hand now, please. We weren't following you. We mm -hmm. just happened to be going to the same place and... Just after you got there. So technically, I think you're just in front of us. So uh, I failed at the sleight of hand. Is there any mechanic that I can use to improve my roll or re-roll? I'm so glad you asked. Because yes, you can push your roll. Uh, now what that entails, many of Free League's games that they have, you there are options where you can re-roll using a push. Now, as an optional rule in the book... Um, you can take the condition that is underneath your attributes. You can take any one, but I like to stick true to the skill itself. So with sleight of hand, as that is an agility, you will then take the uh, dazed condition. Now, as you take the dazed condition, you will roll at disadvantage, which is a bane in this system. So you roll 2d20 and take the highest of the options. Question, could I spend three willpower points to activate my heroic ability to get a boon? You certainly can, which just allows you to re-roll in this instance. Yep, that would be perfect. So uh, I, I picture that Bliss kind of is like sneaking through the bush and reaches out. And just as they turn, like the, the bigger one with the sword kind of smacks his friend on the side and the, oh, the yes. bread gets yanked out of the way. And the mallard just kind of grunts, grits her teeth like bread right there. And I'm going to roll it again. So now I'm angry also. And that is a 14, which is exactly right. <laughs> so they, when he turns back, I'm like, Shh. and then I start nibbling on as I go back to the party. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. You kind of like just start to like, you're just going to kind of like walk out of the bush. Like nothing ever happened. Right. Yeah. But I'm eating the bread. Oh, 100%. 100%. Um, and I apologize, Squints. You said that you were. Um, I was just like trying to them. slightly confuse the two brothers by talking to them as Jason Statham would. Uh, so basically, just trying to like maybe distract them. I don't really know for sure that Bliss is stealing, but it's just sort of a, you know, a good rule of thumb that's happening. When, when you look around and you don't see Bliss, you kind of automatically think trickery is going down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I mean, I'm just trying They're... to like mentally kind of confuse them with my quick wittedness. So, I think. So I, wait, you were in front of us, but how how did we we jumped out at you all? That that doesn't sound right. I think I think y'all are following us. Well, no, you if you were waiting you. for us, that means you were there first, so you knew we were coming. So by staying here vis a vis transitive properties, you were following us. And I think I'll jump in at this point and say, we could travel together. We we could be going to the same place and travel together. Hey, we may even find that we like each other. Don't you, you know think what? that could happen? That actually brings up a good question. He like points a short sword at you. What do you mean? Where where are you all going? Ah, that's a great question. This road seems to be taking us that way. <laughs> Although this guy over here, he wanted us to go that way. Good thing we didn't listen to him, huh? Well, well, how how do you how um Fetter, the one that's carrying like the stuff, he looks at you and he's like, How do y'all know that the tower is that way? 
and oh. and the Weasley one, he he kind of smacks him like, shut up, shut up. Oh, the tower, you say? Oh, tell me more. That sounds interesting. In the background, Bliss tears uh, like half the bread off and hands it to Baston just silently. <laughs> Eating snacks in the background. Um, yeah, Federer Fetter looks at you and he kind of starts smiling again. He kind of takes a step forward. Well, you know, the tower up there, you know, they say there's treasure. And as he's like saying the word treasure, Reich smacks him again. It's like, stop telling him everything. Just stop. I should have left you back at the camp. And he turns back to you all and he's like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Uh, y'all need to, y'all just turn around. Just turn around. Just go back the other way. Well, we could do that. We could do that. We could work together. Because if there's one thing that I found, it's that getting treasure with friends is easier. Go ahead and roll me a persuasion, please. All right. Oh, not good. I got an 18 and my persuasion is six. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you could push the roll if you wish. It is early on. And, you know, the only way to recover from a condition is by taking a shift or a stretch rest, uh, basically your short or long rest. Um, but it is fairly early, but I will, I won't tell you no, if you wish to push. I think I, I think I'll hold off at this point. So I'll <laughs> just fail that roll. Yeah. He looks at, she's like, work together. I, I, I don't, I don't, mm, I don't think, I don't think you would want to, I don't think Ursula would let you, uh, work with us. Uh, yeah, no, I, I totally get that. Um, you know, uh, Ursula has said the same thing to us, you know, work alone, don't pair up with other people. So, so you know. at your silky, 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 just, yeah, I, I think it's best for us to go our own ways. Uh, you're pointed that way. We're pointed this way. So we'll just keep going the way we were going. You just keep going the way you were going. And then, you know, problem solved. And then I'm still start right. walking past them towards where we were already headed. I'll go with him too, and I'll step on one of their feet as I go by. <laughs> they made me angry. <laughs> then um, I'll say, you're not going to tell Ursula, are you? Now, do you want to step on the quiet one that's kind of been smiling, talking to you all, or the the, the no. loud Weasley one? The loud Weasley one, of course. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, yeah, you step on his, uh, his shoe, and you kind of like, ah, what? Ah, mmm. Mm, you're, you're gonna, uh, what was that? I'm sorry. I stepped on an ant. Oh, that was your foot. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know um, what? Do it one more time and we got issues, man. I Just step on his foot again. Time. I stomp on his foot, actually. <laughs> and, and and I'm going to look at him and just snarl. Roll me a uh, persuasion there, uh, Baston. But this is going to be more of... Actually, no. No, no, no. I would say, you know, roll me a persuasion, but this is gonna be more of an intimidation. I would say bluffing, but you're you're wanting to do this, so persuasion. <laughs> persuasion, all right. I'm trying to find it. Uh, oh, I only have a four in that. No, that's a seven. That's not gonna work. All right. Um, you snarl, but you have like a big thing of broccoli in your teeth. Yeah, so. I got like I got still got like a mouthful of bread. Yeah. Red, yeah. Yeah. Um, Bliss, go ahead. I need you to roll a. I need you to roll a, uh, an evade for me, please. Okay. Because he's he's taking his open uh, hand and closing it up, and he's going to swing at you. Uh, so he's just swinging like a punch. Yeah. Oh yeah, I just kind of do this. Success. Oh yeah, I got a okay. six and fourteen. So. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, um, he swings at you, and you just he he kind of like you're kind of like watching his fist go by, and he's like, "Quit moving! Uh, oh, I don't like this." Oh Where's yes, it's let's, so let's terrible go. when people move when you try to hit them. Oh no! He he grabs on the fetter, and uh, they kind of go back through the bush. Um, from what you can tell, I mean, you can only assume that there's more past because. You know, there's been so many paths that have uh, gone left, right, you know, moved around on you all. So you can assume there's a path on the other side. But, yeah, they just kind of go back through the bushes. Thanks for the bread. <laughs> what a bunch of idiots. <laughs> Ursula should never hire people. Wait a minute. Who's Ursula? I don't know. Silky, who's Ursula? Uh, uh, heck 
if I know. Oh. Oh, you were pretend. Oh, sorry. Didn't catch that. I was thinking about how holly this bread is. You were busy picking a fight is what you were doing. <laughs> uh, it wouldn't have been a fight if he wouldn't have distracted the other one when I was trying to grab that bread. Uh, sure. And then you went and stomped on his feet. We've talked about this. I, Listen. I accidentally stepped on his foot. Then he took umbrage. And, you know, I had to stand up for your honor at that point. Oh, please. So Squints will say, some might say that the true treasure is the friends you make. Oh, are they left? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like five minutes ago, Squints. Uh, well, I was reading my book. I Maybe we should go this way. Your book is upside down again. It's dwarven scripture. So. Oh, that explains it. You have to read it right to left then. Yep. And bottom to top, right to left. Gotcha. Yep. Why don't we head towards that tower? Wish to continue. Okay. Yes. Uh, Bliss, I'm going to go ahead and have you do another bushcraft, please. That is a big new. Mm. Okay. Yeah, you all start to, again, you know, you're, you're on this, this path, but you get to a point where it starts to go left, starts to go right, you come to a fork, and you're like, they're kind of looking at you. You just instantly start going off to the side, just towards the left. You all start going further and further and further towards the left, and, you know, you kind of see the tower just, Squints, as you rolled the first bushcraft, I need you to roll me a bushcraft, please. Okay, let's uh, let's try to do better at this time. How about a natural twenty? <laughs> so how oh. about you? How about <laughs> you know? Amen. As as uh, this actually works out well for you, to be honest. Oh, um, sure. That's, well, never, that's, that way. that's never good when the G, when the GM <laughs> yeah, says, yeah, no. oh, this actually is going to work out really well for you. Yeah. It's a dwarven demon, so that means it's good. Exactly. Yeah. It's a one in dwarven it, scripture. And I'm just going to throw this out there. I hope that later on you cast magic and there's a potential of a demon because in this game, mishaps, magical mishaps are where the fun truly is. Um. So as as you all are continuing along, um, my dice have decided that from behind you all, unbeknownst to you all, um, actually, Bliss, you might actually hear something um, right before you get tackled to the ground. <gasps> um, I, see, I told you I'd get you. You're still following us, aren't you? As uh, Reich, the Weasley man who was uh, talking to you all before has tackled you to the ground real quick. Okay. You hear you, the rest of you hear Fetter in the background. No, stop, stop. We got, we, you, you can't do that. I, I picture bliss goes down and you hear, Oh, my beak. You son of a... <laughs> it like starts mallard cursing. And at that point pulls her knife. I'm going to reach over and cover silk tongue's ears. <laughs> I'm gonna immediately like whip around and kind of crouch down, and like the hair on the back of my neck and everything, and then my back just kind of like stands straight up, and I start growling. Okay, yeah, go ahead and do another intimidation for me uh, or persuasion, but using it as an intimidation. And then I know you said you're pulling your knife, huh? Oh yeah. All right. Well, what do you wish to do with said knife? Uh, that aforementioned foot that I stepped on, I'm going to stab my knife into into the foot, into the ground. All right. How'd that uh, persuasion roll go? I failed it. I only have a four, so like, I yeah. All right. Well, uh, go ahead and Bliss, roll me your knives. I got to see if the sticks, no pun intended. I, I got your point, though. Uh, <laughs> and that was an 11 out of 14, so success. All right. Yeah, we'll go ahead and say, wow, right through. And you hear this guttural roar as, um, well, more like a holler. 
as uh, the man just starts to cry out as he's grabbing for his foot and the knife that's stuck in there. I slap. I just keep slapping his hand away going, no, no, <laughs> you got my cloak dirty. You made me drop my bread. You're going to stand there and bleed for. I look down at a non-existent watch. Look up at the sun. Another 30 seconds. Then we're even. Fet, uh, the, the one that was carrying all the food instantly drops it all, runs over. And he's like, please, please, please stop, 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 stop. Get the knife out. We'll we'll take you back to our camp. We'll 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 show you the way to the tower. Just leave just leave Reich alone, please, please. So I Can think I at this point, I you know I start talking to Federer and I, and I say you know I I know what it's like to have an impulsive friend, uh, as you can see. Um, I'm sure that we can resolve this. Uh, you know, yeah, he's a he's a little hot headed. You know, I think maybe though we've all learned a lesson here. Like keep the keep the mallard happy. Um, it gets thrown at the back of your head when you're now, saying that. Bliss, I need you. I need you to gently remove the knife. Bliss, like grumbles, reaches down, grabs the knife, and very slowly and carefully. Not with oh. nobody noticing that they're, she's twisting it slightly, ah. removes oh. it very slowly and gingerly, oh. Oh. and then reaches down to uh, the man's cloak and wipes the knife clean and sheaths it. Ah, oh, uh. God, that hurts. Oh. As a friend to you, uh, as a favor to your friend with the bread, I missed all the bones. You will not be so lucky next time. All right, all right, fine, fine. Uh, we'll, we'll 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 take you to the tower. It it seems like y'all are getting lost, anyways. Uh, <laughs> You're the ones following us. Well, we we thought you were following us at first, so of course we're following you now. I turned to Federer. Yeah, we were pretty lost. If you could show us the way, that would be very helpful. And Federer, Federer will look at you and like, it's okay. We, I, I get lost through this haunted marsh at least once a week. <laughs> it's the darnest thing. Uh, so yeah, uh, Federer will go grab all the food, and then he'll walk over to his Weasley little friend and says, Right. This is why I tell you, you got to be nicer to people. And he kind of like starts to pick him up a little like by the shoulder, kind of like lifting him up. And Reich looks at, well, specifically Bliss, but uh, looks at the rest of the party and just. <sighs> this is why I don't like going to town, people. Oh, I, I'm with you there. <laughs> See, people have all we the have money. a lot. We have a lot in common already. <laughs> yeah. Bliss well, um, takes another loaf of bread, rips it in half, and gives it to Squints this time. Quit. Start eating. Say, look, I didn't say you could have our food. I said we'll take it to the tower. Well, you left it here on the ground. I figured it was for anybody. All right, whatever. It's supposed to be for a party. Whatever. A party? And they 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 they'll just start kind of walking off, and uh, you you'll see Fetter kind of turn around, just kind of like, "Come on, let's go." I pick up the rest yeah. of their stuff and put it in my pockets. <laughs> it's definitely like a uh, you know a uh, couple loaves of bread, you know, some bananas, some oranges. Uh, but you do happen to notice that Reich has or uh, Fetter, sorry, the one carrying the stuff, he has this nice keg under his arm. Hmm. I'm going to pull Bastion onto the side and say, uh, I hope you've been practicing that perception like I've been mentioning. Have you noticed that the, the one has a bit of a limp? I think something has happened to his foot recently. Mm. It looks like it. I hate to have anything worse happen to it. <laughs> So, um, how how closely would you all like to follow them as they lead you all um, towards the Great Red Rock? I think I'm going to walk right next to Federer, like I'm trying to sort of stri strike up a friendship with him. Okay. So, okay. like we're side by side, basically. 
Yeah, yeah, and and like I said, he's kind of he's got a keg under one arm, and he's kind of got his hand underneath his uh, fellow companion uh, Reich's uh, arm to kind of help push him, you know, lead him along. Anything specific you'd like to say? Uh, I think um, I think you know I'll get out some rations of mine, and you know I'll say, well, I know we we took some of your food. You can. Um, if you want some of what I've got with me, it's just trail food, nothing special. But um, I'll, off, I'll sort of share it with better. Got some rations in my inventory. Man, you're just so nice. Like this, this is this is why I like talking to people. Like there's just there's people like you just out there everywhere. You just don't know where you're gonna find them. You hear kind of a small snickering from Reich. Uh, Echoed but, by the mallard. Do what? Echoed by the mallard. <laughs> Um, but you'll hear, you'll, you'll see Fetter kind of turns like, right, just cheer up, man. They didn't kill you. Okay. We still yeah. get to go back to the camp. We get to go back and have a party tomorrow. You know, like, come on. And I think, I think, you know, I'm still talking to him and Hey, you know, uh, the only thing about these, um, these trail rations, it does make you a little bit thirsty. I don't know if you guys have anything to drink or maybe we'll get to that later. Like I'm kind of eyeing the keg he's got. Oh, we can't touch the keg. Uh, uh, Ursula will hurt us. Like we we can't we can't. This is for tomorrow. This is for tomorrow. We can't oh, touch it. We can't touch it yet. I totally understand. Yeah, t tomorrow is important for the um, the what is it again that is happening tomorrow? Go ahead and roll me persuasion, please. <laughs> I got a six, which is uh, exactly what I needed. There you go. Nice. Uh, Fetter will look at you and smiling while he's you know walking. He's like, "Well, we're gonna throw a party tomorrow. It's kind of a celebration, you know. It'll be after." As he says that word, after Fetter will get kind of pushed into you, and Reich is kind of just hopping. He's like, "Shut up! Quit telling them everything. You just met him like ten minutes ago." I think someone's got some trust issues. Oh, no. Do not. We are not doing one of those trust fall exercises. I was black and blue for two days because Squint's missed. I told you to fall to the left. It's not my fault you fell to the right. I fell to the left. You, you said, oh, no. Oh, it's a dwarven right. right. Yeah. yeah. <sighs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, Right, kind of keeps hopping up for, uh, you know, hopping along for a moment until Fetter he kind of gains his balance, grabs onto you, and it's like, sorry about that. Walks back over, kind of grabs onto Right. It's like, look, they're coming with us. Like, just be nice, man. Like, gosh. Yeah. You know, I think I already see him turning a turning a new leaf. I I think I see a, a nicer side of of Reich coming out here. <laughs> So, so yeah, you all will keep on going. It takes roughly an hour. But before you know it, you get to the base of the Red Rock. Um, and this thing is monstrous. Um, one thing about this system is they deal in meters. This is a, uh, you know, freely, um, they are a Swedish company. They deal in the metric system. So everything is meters. Uh, so as far as, the distance goes up the rock. It's far, um, but Fetter just looks at. She's like, our our uh, our camp is kind of like halfway up the rock. We're just about thirty meters up. It's not that far. And he kind of looks at Ry. He's like, all right, buddy, come on, let's we can do this. We're almost there. And he's just hopping along, just grumbling, just just oh my foot, ah, oh, just kind of looks back at Bliss, just ah, oh, his foot, ah, oh, it's in pain. She just smiles sweetly at him. <laughs> You know, the Come other on. day, I, uh, along. in the past, I've heard my foot, and Baston was very nice, uh, was, was quite a gentleman in helping me uh, get up, uh, you know, to get where I needed to go. Baston, do you think you could help out here? I'm just going to, like, glare at Silk Tongue, and I'll be like, <laughs> and I'll begrudgingly help uh, a little bit. Uh, I'll kind of get underneath, put my, my little 
wolf head underneath his his arm and kind of help him along. Now, do you want to? Because I, you, you would be a little bit taller than him. So, would it be to the point where you're kind of like lifting him off the ground, like as you're walking, kind of going? Or yeah, I mean, it's totally not going to be very comfortable for him. Oh, I'm no. trying to make sure that it's like it's helpful, but not really helpful. I mean, are you really trying to make this guy comfortable? Like, let's face it, not really. I'm giving the appearance that I'm trying to be helpful, but I'm not. Of course, of course. Yeah, uh, and and Federer just like, man, you're just so nice. Like, these are nice people. Like, and kind of even looks at Bliss like, you know, like, you could have killed him. I seen it. Like, you had your knife there, but you didn't. Like, you guys are nice. I could have gelded him, too. That costs yeah. extra, though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and he just kind of keeps on going. <laughs> but Reich, yeah, he's like, oh, no. Oh, Walk a little slower. Ah, just oh. come on, keep up. We got places to be. Uh. And it takes it takes a little bit, you know. Um, but yeah, you all get up to the camp. And like I said, the camp is roughly about thirty meters up. It's halfway up the rock, um, and you can see this this tower before you. I mean, this thing is impressive. Um, but. As, as you all start to walk up, you happen to notice that there's like three tents. There's a couple trees out because uh, it's kind of like a, a flat ground. Like it goes up, it's flat, and then it goes up even further. And in this flat area, there's a couple trees, a couple tents, and then there's this camp, little, uh, like a little campfire sitting around with logs. And you see a couple people kind of motioning and whatnot. One of them runs over to uh, what looks like a, a female human. And as you all get towards the top, Fetter, he just kind of yells out, Hey, Ursula, we're back. We brought some friends. Which Reich, again, just kind of looking at him like, Why are you so loud? Just telling everybody everything. God. But the female in reference stands up, turns around, and you can kind of see where um, one side, the face is kind of like, it, it looks like it's shaved almost, like the hair is gone, but you see these like gnarly claw marks. Um, but she looks at you all and, great, what happened to you all? Right. Why are you limping? Why is why is this random person carrying you? Yeah, we found these two wandering around out in the woods. Said you were having a party, so we brought bread. And a keg. Oh, you uh and, and kind of looks at like looks at Fetter first and says, Oh, are you just talking to random people again? And then looks over, looks like, looks at all of you, kind of just taking a one second look, and then looks at Reich, the one that uh, Vaston is carrying, and you allowed him to talk. What, what, what good is your all services if, if you all just tell everybody everything we're doing? What, well, what's going on here? To, to be fair, good madam, I am a mentalist of extraordinary power, and even had these said nothing, I would have been able to deduce so much about us. For for example, I have already deduced that your name is Ursula. Now, how would I have known that any other way? So I think we can dispense with these frivolities and get to the frivolity of a party. She'll look at you and she's like, oh, you're a mage. Well, I prefer mentalist. Mage is kind of a degrading term, but you know, sure, if you want to use it loosely like that. Maybe there is hope yet. Maybe you two brought help with you. Uh, how about the keg? Don't worry about the keg. Please have a seat. And she'll kind of usher you to where the, uh, the camp is with the logs going around the campfire. Excellent. I will, I will go over and have a seat, pull off my boots and sort of stretch my toes out by the fire. I'm sort of like, um, you know, uh, giving some condolences to Federer, you know, after, you know, Ursula hurt his feelings a little bit. I, you know, I'm, I'm just 
just kind of, yeah, hey, it's okay, you know. Okay. Met some new people and you, you wanted to get to know them. I feel the same way. I think Bliss is sitting directly across from Fire from Reich and just smiling at him. <laughs> it's a it's a vicious smile because she's still pretty pissed off, but Oh, still in the angry condition for sure. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm going to like kind of take my place around the fire, but like I'll kind of walk around a little bit, kind of sniffing out, like see if I can sense anything that might be off. And I'll just kind of kind of kind of take my time finding my spot around the the camp the, the uh, on a log uh, around the campfire and just kind of eyeball everything and and kind of look at uh, squints and bliss every once in a while like uh are we sure everything's gonna be okay here you think we're we're gonna be safe uh while you do that go ahead and roll me an awareness please oh that's a 20 damn it <laughs> we're gonna be fine <laughs> so so yeah um ursula invites you all in you all kind of take up your positions as you all said uh but best on as as you're kind of walking around um you're paying too much attention you're paying uh too much heed to the party itself with Urs uh ursula right there and as you're walking you kind of you kind of stump your toe against one of the logs. Yep. Uh, now, you don't say anything because Beston Bloodjaw is a strong fighter. Um, but it definitely hurts. And you did not enjoy that. You did not enjoy that. There's like a single silent tear. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Um, yeah, Urs uh, Ursula will sit down and, and kind of look at you all and say, like, all right, well, um, we, it looks like we've got some interesting people here uh maybe you all could be of service maybe maybe you want to join us for our party tomorrow maybe i hire you first tonight and we celebrate tomorrow maybe you all earn some extra coinage go on well you see i have a uh it's a tall order it's a it's a large problem uh it's a giant and she's kind of she points over to the tower and she says there's a giant up there and well we were gonna go take care of it and we're gonna kind of throw a party in celebration tomorrow you know it's not every day that you can take down a giant of course but you all look able people and kind of looks over towards Reich, smiles, and then from the interaction of the party and the two, looks over at you, Bliss, and kind of smiles as well. Kind of gets this intention that it was potentially you that had something to do with the Reich over there walking with a limp. <laughs> Big smile across, you know. Yeah. Um when she looks up at Squints, I'm currently using a fine dagger to dig out dirt from underneath my toenails. <laughs> Duly noted. Duly noted. Um, maybe you all have skills that you all can help us with. Um, what do you say? Maybe earn some gold? How about this? We will give you half the treasure if you all take care of our giant problem for us. Why Why only half? We do all the work. Shouldn't we get all of it? And this is where you see where she had a smile. She now goes to a straight face. And she looks at you and she's like, Oh, we have thinkers. We have negotiators, it looks like. I mean, I think half is a, a fair, I think that's fair for defeating mm. the giant. Yeah, I think that that's uh, fair if you uh, are just going to sit back and do nothing. And I'm just going to 
take pick my teeth uh, even more. Just uh, yeah, I'll I offer you my knife that has just been into my toes. Mm. I'll you... take I'll take it and then I'll just uh, kind, of look, <laughs> kind of look at it. I'll sniff it. Yeah. I'll just kind of shrug and then start picking my teeth with it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Ursula as she's watching this, she's just like. All right. So I'll jump in and say, well, you know, there's probably there's probably a deal we can work out. We understand that you are uh, this is your camp here, and you've welcomed us in with open arms. I think that's Indeed. worth something. Indeed, it uh, seems seems to me as the leader of your crew, you are entitled to fifty percent, uh, uh, and they can get the other fifty percent of your share which should be 20 percent, and we should get 80 percent oh yeah yeah, she, she, yeah. she kind of looks at she's like i know your type you don't look much like them you you look like yeah you are the thinker go ahead and roll me a persuasion to see if she's even likes this potential uh, it's not great. I got an 11. Yeah, my persuasion is 6. Mm. Yeah, I don't... I'm... I'm, <laughs> I'm not looking for a potential of a loss in this. The amount of time we've put here. The amount of... Well, you're not the boss. I don't have to explain myself to you all. So, let's do this. I'll go as far as say I'll give y'all forty, and we keep sixty. How about that? Passed on. Didn't she just offer fifty, and now forty is less? Ah, uh, I'm not very good at math. Hang on, <laughs> I, I I fill I fill a like. A, a flagon with, from the ale thing that I tapped when no one was looking, and I handed to Bassner. Wash your jaws out. You don't know where that dagger's been. Oh, yeah, we do. It's not good. I don't think we can live with what you're offering. Doesn't seem like we have. We're doesn't seem like we're getting closer to uh, an understanding here. Well, uh, I tell you what, you all could go back down out of this area, leave our camp, go through the Honda marshes again, and we could take care of the giant problem and keep 100%. I was trying to simply make a deal. Well, I think that you don't think that you can do it, and that's why you need us to do it for you, and therefore that's why I think we should get a larger share. Because oh. I think that you were just waiting for someone else to come along to do this for you. Oh, oh, Ursula needs some strong party to come and save her. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah. And she kind of lets out this giggle. And she looks at you and she's like, I tell you what. If you all can go up there and potentially take care of this giant... We will let you have 100%. How about that? How about that? Boom. What I tell you guys, I'm the I, I'm the master negotiator right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a trap. It's Obviously. not a trap. Oh, please, please. Silly Mallard. No, there is no trap. There is a giant. Uh, Fetter, Fetter, please tell them there, there's a giant up there. And and you see Fetter just smile and just, oh yeah, there's 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 a giant up there. I mean, I don't want to fight it. <laughs> I don't want to fight it, I tell you that. <laughs> Am I able to read anything into Fetter? I mean, I think most likely he's just giving me his genuine reaction. He's not necessarily hiding anything, but Yeah, I mean, in in, in Dragon Bane, there is no like insight unless you take the heroic ability that allows you the insight sure. but go ahead and roll me 
go ahead and roll me uh, charisma okay. um, to kind of tell because of your little buddy buddy that you've kind of developed at, on your walk here. I'll allow a charisma uh, roll to see. Okay. My charisma is 14. I got a 15. Not so great. <laughs> I, I, you know, again, you could push it if you wish. Let's push it. What would salt and pepper do? What would salt and pepper do? Real good. But everything that is charisma based would be at a bane, my friend. I know. I don't. Want, I can't. I can't blow my charisma like that. So I'm gonna just go with my gut, which is that this guy doesn't know a damn thing. <laughs> oh, they tell Fetter everything, don't you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think at most, maybe you know, he was fed some misinformation in order to mislead. So. I don't think he's deceiving us anyway. That's my that's my gut. So, but I I don't I don't get anything one way or the other. Probably no no. Um, but yeah, she she's just like I mean, please entertain us. Go do this great deed that you say you can do. And you, Bliss, you will actually see Reich kind of smile at you, and he's like. Yeah, why don't you go do? Uh, why don't you why don't you go try and stab that that uh, giant in the foot? How about that? Why don't you Why don't you see what he does? Oh, you mean like this? And I reach over, grab Squince's dagger out of Baston's hand, and I throw it at his other foot. All right, go ahead and roll your knife, please. That's a five out of fourteen. Got it. All right. Yeah. This time I aim for bones. Right into the foot. And you again hear uh, the same holler from earlier, where he's like, oh, oh, oh God, no. You know, rock this, rock that. Ah. And uh, you mend your attitude. As as you see that you know see that, and I, I sure I'm I'm sure you start to smile, right? Mm -hmm. Well, as you start to turn and you see Ursula staring daggers right at you and says, "If you do that one more time, he doesn't right. have any more feet." Yeah, he's a got a point. point. He's, yeah, he's got a point. Yeah. It's only only and, two feet right there. And you can I keep mean, the dagger. I don't I don't like where it's wait, that's my, that's mine. That's mine though. <laughs> it was Squint's Squint. dagger. Oh, it's Squint's dagger? Yeah, he was picking his toes with it. Oh. If, and then if, you put it in your mouth. Oh, I thought What's once it's in my mouth, it's mine. <laughs> uh, no, once I put something in my mouth, it's mine. Isn't that how it works? That's the that's that's how property works around yeah, here. Yeah, right? I can't argue with that. That Long sounds land. like a lot of science to me. Yeah. Did you lick it? I mean, like with intent. If you don't lick it with intent, it's not yours. So as you say that, Why you don't get ice. Bliss, you will actually see a dagger fly in the air right at your feet. Okay, I will just move my foot. Oh no, no, it doesn't. It doesn't aim. At, oh. It doesn't hit you or anything like that. It flies and hit lands right next to your feet. Okay, you know, uh, pointing in down, of course. Um, if you do that one more time to anybody here, you will not leave this camp. Is that like a magic curse or something? Um, is there any, what would I roll to know about giants in this world? Is there like a myth monster lore sort of thing? There is. There is a beast lore, please. Ooh, beast lore. Ah, finally, a success. I got a four under 14. All right. So with giants, you will know that they are, there are not many within the realm. Um, there are far and few between, but when you see one, you try to steer clear um, or potentially persuade them otherwise. Um, now, with, with your success, you do know that they have a weak spot on the top of their head. Mm -hmm. um, now, how you're supposed to get there, that is completely on you because they are giant creatures. Um, so we like what are we talking like 20 feet tall 50 feet tall like what is a giant 
And I assume that in my book somewhere, there's like a little diagram and oh, like for notes sure. to the side. Yeah, I'm, that, I'm sure. kind of refreshing myself on this information. <laughs> uh, Remember, it's in meters. It's in oh, meters. Thank you. Yes. They, they are roughly five to six meters. Okay. Which will put them, you know, three meters or uh, three feet per, per meter. So anywhere from 15 to 18 feet tall. Okay. Oh, that's not that bad. Yeah. No, that's no problem whatsoever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I think wh and, what I would like to try to do, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. No, no, um, please, please. I was thinking I might, um, try to lead bliss away and just, you know, maybe kind of say like, um, I, let me, let me take uh, my friend to, uh, calm down a little bit and I'm whispering to bliss, like, why don't, why don't we snoop around a little bit? Well, I beseech you, why don't you all just go take care of this giant if you're so eager to fight? What, what time of day is it? Is it early, early evening, late at night? Like, what are we dealing with? It's definitely early evening. When you all entered into the uh, haunted marshes, it was early in, early in the day, you know, roughly 9, 10. It took a while to get through. You all had to, uh, you know, met two new good friends, of course, yep, yep. Uh, through your ventures through. So, yeah, we're roughly, roughly in the early evening. We're, you know, five, six o'clock. Okay. I think if the, if the, if the rest of the party is uh, interested in sort of heading right to the tower, we can do that. If not, I'm going to try to pull Bliss away from this uh, gathering before he's really starts uh before she really starts a fight uh that does happen although the whole way there is just a constant yeah i know i know i know and as as that as that serious voice had come out of ursula um you'll notice now around the camp there seems to be a couple more bodies uh, that wasn't like previously out out noticeable before, uh, kind of keeping their eye out, watching what's going on. So um, I think at this point I'm looking a little bit at Baston and Squints. Like, are we doing this? I'm sort of like you know inquiring gaze towards them. Yeah, I'll, I'll kind of. Uh... I'll I'll follow you off out out of the camp uh, site and uh, kind of, but I'll walk kind of backwards as I'm like kind of gl glaring at them and making sure that, that nobody's going to sneak up behind us and that we're going to get away safely. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean there is a small area off to the side. Uh, now, it's it's pretty much a, a small cliff. You you can look down and it 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 goes pretty far. But uh, there's a this lone tree right there that if you all wish to talk to yourselves, kind of look around. You don't see anybody, so you're welcome to uh, chitter chat while right there. I don't want to alarm anyone, but I don't think we can trust Ursula. My uh, my mentalist abilities have told me that <laughs> this could no, be. No. I mean, maybe. Maybe it's a trap. A trap. Uh... Boy, if only someone had mentioned that it's a trap and not gotten yelled down by their friends. Oh, don't get your feathers in a ruffle. Don't get your ruffles in a feather, Squints. I think our I best bet <laughs> is to try to nab some treasure and then come back and admit that we were unable to to um, to defeat the enemy and, and skedaddle as soon as we can. Hmm. Or we lead the giant back to them. Ah. And it stomps them for us while we get into the tower and get all the treasure. Oh, I like how idea. Bliss, I like how Bliss thinks. Treasure first, revenge next. It's like a dessert. Treasure, mm. like revenge is the amuj bouche. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Bliss, I've noticed that people want to hit you. Maybe if. <laughs> Just, just a general observation. Yeah, yeah that just seems to be a <laughs> wait, common wait, thread did, here. Did Squints the Mentalist realize this? <laughs> uh, 
So if we pretend that you are part of Ursula's crew, then that would be a good way to lead the giant back to attack their camp. Yes. Mm. Sounds good. Very good. I, I think we might have the beginnings of a plan here. And, and before we move further, I'd just like to say, I think I just realized I have Bliss on yes, my shirt. You do. I, what was I thinking? Uh, I apologize, Bliss. I didn't realize you were right here. I get so well, you, Some might oh, say that heart. your ignorance was Bliss. Oh. Uh, it. Shazam. <laughs> Doesn't get any better than that, folks. Go ahead and go yeah. on this. Where, where's that mute button? I know okay. it's here somewhere. I don't have the control. I, it's you know, typically as the GM, I have all controls, but Baston over here, he's he's got it all, you know. So no one um, controls like Baston. <laughs> all right. So so please do tell. Um, do you all walk back over to the little camp and uh, tell Ursula your all's grand plan? No. I say, um, you know, uh, by implying that we are not able to defeat one giant, you have deeply offended us. And the only way who, for us to who, regain our honor. Who are you talking to? I'm talking to Ursula. She's Stop like for a minute 10 here. meters that way. <laughs> she can't hear you. I, I, I mean, I, I'll assume you walked back over. Yes. Okay. That was who, that's who I was addressing. Okay. Uh, so yeah, my play is basically we're deeply offended and we're so mm. offended that we're going to, um, yes, we're going to show you that we can beat this, uh, giant. Yeah. As, as you all walk back over and you, uh, you see Ursula just staring at you all and, um, you happen to also notice that Fetter is right next to Reich. Uh, he's got both shoes off and it looks like he's taking some bandages to wrap up his feet. Um, but yeah, Ursula just looks at you and says, I mean, at this point, I, I don't care if I hurt your feelings or not. Um, but please amuse me. The tower's right there. Oh, you're going to be so amused by the end of this. Flatly amused, you might say. Hard I'm sorry, did you say bliss. something? Speaking to Bliss. Silky? I don't think she said anything. We are... Um, we're going this way. <laughs> okay. So as, as you all start to walk through the camp, again, like I said, there was a couple tents, um, but you happen to notice there's about five more people standing in the camp as well, plus Ursula, plus Fetter, plus Wright. Um, but yeah, the sun's starting to set. Um, like I said, the, thank you, Janet. the, the tower itself is roughly 30 more meters up, you know, the sun's starting to set. So you will potentially need to light a torch here soon because in this game, no PC has dark vision. So without dark vision, you cannot see in the dark. If it is pitch black, we're rolling at a bane on everything, my friends. Um, <clears throat> well, do we want to take a night and come at this fresh in the morning? Well, I've I've got a torch and uh, some flint and tinder. I can kind of lead the way if you really need me to. Um, I don't think we can trust them to not murder us in our sleep. Yeah, what Bliss said. Yeah, yeah. I don't like. I don't. I don't trust them at all. I think she's right. Uh, referencing my dwarven lore book. Are giants nocturnal, or do they sleep at night like other humanoids? Might we perchance sneak up on it? It's not necessarily that they're nocturnal, um, but you do happen to read that uh, they are found often enough sleeping. Mm. Um, and, and you can almost like take that as they're not worried that anything's going to try to attack them. Because of them being so large. Mm. Okay. All right. Well, then let us continue on. I guess we'll try to move quick enough that we don't need to light a torch, but obviously we will if we need to. Mm. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. As you all, um, you know, 
a, go up the uh the because it's a, it's a thin path uh but not thin enough that you can't like walk side by side um but up the path towards the the tower um you know this tower was once a mighty fortress uh it's four stories high built of red stone so you know where this great rock is red the the, the tower itself is red as well um the roof is flat it's surrounded by battlements but the tower is badly damaged um there's as you're like looking at it you can tell that there is one broken wall that's wide open and it's blackened with soot like this is easy to see coming up the path um there are stones scattered across the ground all around it it's as if a a huge fireball had once blasted this fortress um and as you get like closer you start to hear these faint but distinct Ah, oh, whales and sighs. Hmm. What what is our marching order by chance? Who who deems them um brave to walk in front? Uh Baston and Squints, I think, are in front. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll bring up the rear just in case somebody sneaks up behind us. Oh, of course, of course. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. As as you all are coming up, you hear the distinct um, sighs. You hear the distinct wails. But Squints and Baston, I need a awareness roll, please. Oh no, no, I failed terribly. Wasn't a dragon or demon, but it was bad. Yeah, I. Uh... I had a five and I rolled a seven. Okay. Yeah. As, as you all get towards the top, you can see where, um, you know, typically to a fortification, such as a tower of this, there's just normally a rectangular door, whether it be stone, wood, some kind of make or something like that. But this whole entrance is just blown open. Again, you can see this coming up the whole outside of this now new door is just covered in black soot. Um, and and kind of like as you all get up close, you can actually start to see like it kind of turns in and you can see inside the tower. What, before, what before you uh, were coming up, you couldn't hear it. But now that you've gotten like right up to the entrance, not all the way in, but just right up there, mm -hmm. You can actually what almost makes like snoring. Hmm. Almost like they need a fantasy CPAP machine. It's so bad. <laughs> no, it kind of sounds like Bliss when Bliss sleeps. You get smacked on the ankle. Oh. Oh, I'm being quiet. <laughs> um yeah, and uh best on I would assume because you know, you try to prove yourself as, you know, stronger than everybody else. You peer in a little bit further in the very corner of this tower. You can actually see. Now, you've never seen a giant. You can only presume that this large creature that is in the corner is a giant. And it is sleeping. Shh. Sleepy, sleepy. Let's go. Okay. okay, hang on. Are we killing it? Or are we going past it to go after treasure? Uh, treasure? Grab treasure? Run? Have it follow us? Have it wipe out the camp? Okay. Well, Actually, I grabbed... Wolf is right this time. I grabbed Ursula's dagger, so on our way out, I'll throw it at it so they get it sent her scent and then they'll charge that hopefully uh, wait does it so, have a scent thing like me that's weird I, I don't know ask the mentalist hey squints what do, do giants have like a scent of smell like kind of thing how do giants, giants smell you don't know how giants yeah. smell I've never absolutely heard of absolutely awful so well, they need some more of this, and I'm going to take out some no, of my no, no, uh, no, perfume, and no. I'm going to just spray it all no. over me. 
Best son, we've talked about this. We've it just smells like this. wet dog. <laughs> oh no! So as as all this commotion's going on, you all hear this deep voice. Who's out there? Ursula. Wait, she, Ursula's out here. Where? Shut up. Where? She followed us. <laughs> wow. Glam Glam's trying to sleep. Who's out there? Who? My name is Ursula, and I'm here for your treasure. Wait. Her name's not Ursula Bliss. Shut up, Preston. Oh. Ursula, I told you, I'll get the rock moved. I will move it, and you can come in to get treasure, but I'm sleeping right now. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on. This isn't Ursula. Ursula is that dumb bitch at the bottom of the sta- <laughs> uh, bottom of the road. Uh, she sent us up here to kill you. Why would I do that? If you're actually, wait a minute. Why would she send me to kill you if you're working? Oh, you're her boss. And you, you, you feel the ground shake a little bit like, mm. and you, you see uh, kind of like starting, like if you all happen to look in, you see like starting to stand up and like kind of has to like bend over as it's standing up this giant creature who said they're coming out to kill glam glam. Oh, Glam Glam, hi, and and uh, Bliss actually walks forward in front of everybody. Hi, uh, we were down there. There was a talkative guy. I might have stabbed him in the foot a little bit, but Ursula said that if we came up here and killed you, we could take all the treasure for ourselves. And we're like, why would we kill Glam Glam? Glam Glam's cool. So we decided to come up here and warn you that she's got it in for you. <sighs> do, do any of you have any weapons out by chance? I don't. I have my staff, but it's it's more like a wizard's walking staff, you know, right, Gandalf right, style. Right, so. right. I, I have like a long spear, but I feel it's like on my back. Yeah, like yeah, not, yeah, yeah. Not okay. drawn. I'm, I'm just making sure, just making sure. Yeah, Glam Glam sees you, walks over to you, and starts to like put his hand around you, but he's like, wait, you said you were hired to kill Glam Glam? And you, you don't want to kill Glam Glam? No, why would we want to do that? A really confused look on his face. You're a giant. My friend over there says you're incredibly rare. Why would we kill you? Ursula, that would be like that'd be like killing the sunrise. You're Which a national one? treasure. Which one say that? I point at Squints. Oh, the dwarf. Oh, okay. Uh the not smelly one. Well, he smelled like rock, but oh yeah, but Mr. Glam Glam, if I may. Oh God! May I address you? Because I think I have some very bad news for you. I think that someone is trying to play a trick on you and make you feel dumb. And I don't think that that probably feels very good to feel no. dumb. No. And so no, Glam Glam's not dumb. No, nope. no, of course not. No. So it, you know, just with you know all of what's been going on, it really seems to add up to. Ursula is trying to play a trick on you. I don't know if she thinks it's funny to make you feel dumb or she wants other people to laugh at you. Can, she didn't tell us which of those it was, but it's definitely one of those. Can, can, can I interject here and just say, uh, I don't think it's funny to make you feel dumb, glam, glam. No, I think that's mean and I don't want to, I don't want you to have her feelings. Yeah. So yeah, actually we, we all talked about it on the way up here. Yeah, we, we did. Agreed. So Ursula is, really really want to kill glam glam that's what she said i don't think she thinks she can kill you but i think that she thinks that maybe if she makes you confused and feel dumb that like she'll be able to take what's yours we had a deal we I know i i i was cleaning out this 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 tower uh and he points over to where if you're now properly looking in um, there's a lot of rubble like up against the walls and everything like that. But in the center of the room, um, there's this giant boulder that sits um, kind of like indented in the floor, almost like mm-hmm. there's a passageway underneath it. Mm-hmm. And he, he goes, Glam Glam, clean this entire tower and get rid of all the rock so that way oh. Urs- Ursula and people go down into the tower for treasure. But she thinks she can just kill Glam Glam? No. Glam Glam will show her. 
Well, Glam Glam, please listen. I, I wish you would let us uh punish her for you. No, no, uh, I don't no. I don't Silky, he has a right to be angry. And oh. I would not for one blame him if he took that big boulder and dropped it on Ursula's head. Yeah, you're right, because that's probably the only way he's gonna not feel like he is the is the butt of her jokes. Yeah, yeah. 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 Dropping rocks on people makes you feel better. Isn't that right, Squints? Squints? Uh, yes. Thank you. So I will need a group persuasion to ensure that he doesn't think you all are part of this. All right. How, how do we do that, Mr. Dragon? So everybody roll your persuasion. Uh, we will need more successes than failures. I got a dragon. Oh. I got a dragon. I am going to push my roll. Because well, otherwise, well, otherwise we'll be at even, right? Or does the well, dragon give us an extra? Silk Tongue rolled a dragon. So I, I this is the first dragon roll tonight. So I I I, I want to say that this will push it in your all's favor. Okay, then I failed. <laughs> I fail. I like it. So I, I kind of wanted to see if I could do this and maybe weave this into that success. Uh, one of the abilities I have is Farsight. And I'm not actually going to use it, but I'm going to tell Glam Glam that I am. And I'm going to eavesdrop on what Ursula is saying right now. And then I'm going to mime out Ursula's voice going, I bet those adventurers killed Glam Glam because he's dumb. So I'm going to put on this little pantomime story, but try to convince him that I'm using magic to hear exactly what Ursula is saying. So Maybe Silk Tongue can be Ursula. Like we'll put on a little play. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know what? I, I, I like the way that this is working. We'll, we'll roll with it. No pun intended. Um, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and tell Glam Glam what you'd like to say. Yeah. Well, since Silk Tongue basically rolled the the, the, the dragons, I'm going to say that I'm going to cast a spell because I'm a mighty wizard. And this will allow us to hear through Silk Tongue's voice what Ursula is saying right now. And then I'll let Silk Tongue perform as Ursula. Okay. Now, all of you know that Glam Glam thinks that we're friends and that he's going to do a favor for us and then we're going to be so thankful. But what he doesn't know is that we all think he's dumb and we all are laughing behind his back. But don't anybody tell him. If you run into Glam Glam, don't tell him that we're laughing behind his back. Um, but if we can, maybe we can find somebody that can like sneak up on him and uh, kill him. And then we will all laugh so hard. That's pretty much what, um, what she's saying right now. Squint. So as, as you all are watching Glam Glam's face, you can see it's not even an irritation. It's not um, anger. It's not even like, blood rising it's it is straight murderous rage that comes over his face and he instantly slams his fist onto the ground um everybody takes two points of bludgeoning damage as you all fall prone now if you have armor this will negate it um but he, as as you all are prone watching this happen, this this monstrous giant of a creature standing above you all, pure rage just fueling through his veins. He walks in, tilted again, grabs this giant boulder in both hands, walks out to you all, standing above you all with this boulder. Glam Glam's no dummy. Glam Glam will solve this problem walks a little further over you all and um you know this this there, there's a very small clearing um like as the path like leveled out and leads into the for the tower itself glam glam stands there 
And again, the sun is still setting. You know, it's still it's still light out. Don't get me wrong. You can still see everything clearly. You, But you see, as you all are still prone, Glam Glam just shout out towards the camp. Ursula, this is for you! And kind of does like that uh, strongman thing. Spins around, holding it a couple times, and then, whoo, yeets this giant boulder into the air. And you just see it sail. Six. Until it starts to even out. And it, it it's flying true. Like, as you are looking, you're like, oh, God. Like, just, oh, no. Okay. At this point, I do want to use Farsight because I want to see this from their perspective. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. You instantly start to tell me. Tell me how does how does Farsight work for you? What what happens? Um. So I think it's uh almost like a, a swirly mist engulfs my head, almost like uh like Mysterio, like a like a, like a fishbowl around my head. Okay. So no one else can see my face, but I see like I'm looking through like a, a vision as if I was there. Okay. So I can. You know, almost like a VR helmet, I guess. I can, like, move my body around and as yeah. if I'm there, but obviously no one can see me. And so I'm just going to kind of get there and just get next to Ursula and just look up at the boulder next to Ursula and start yeah. to giggle <laughs> like a child. Yeah, because, in, in fact, I'll, I'll, I'll do the scene for you. She is sitting with her back towards the tower. She is just staring at the, uh, the, the little situation of Reich getting his feet tended to by Fetter. Um, in fact, she's kind of going on this small monologue of, where do you find these people? Where where in the world? You, I sent you all on an errand to get food for a celebration. Instead, you bring these, and that's when you he, that she hears, Ursula! And she's like, oh, God. Glam Glam's awake, apparently. Turns around and sees... Glam Glam standing there at the top. And you see where Glam Glam still has his hand up in the air and it's like bringing it down. So she starts to look up. And you, I mean, you all see it. It's almost like it's aiming straight for the campfire itself when boom, dust just goes everywhere. Oh crap, I forgot my boots. <laughs> but where as soon as impact happens you all start to hear this thunderous um sound as glam glam is running down the path towards the camp itself um should you continue to be prone watching the situation a little bit further um, you hear loud bangs as well. Um, in a moment, out of one of the, the, the dust clouds itself, you'll see as somebody, a person, ah, is being yeeted into the air, just flying. Another couple of moments goes by, some loud bangs and whatnot. You see another person being yeeted out the other side of the cloud, just flying. Just, Whoa! I, I assume I think, that, yeah, I, I assume I, at this point you all want to stand up and maybe go in the tower. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, th I think I'm gonna I'm gonna start to go into the tower and then I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna yell as loud as I can. Batterer, you said you didn't want to fight a giant. So run! <laughs> and then I head into the tower. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, as you look around the uh, this level of the tower, like I said, there's a bunch of rubble. Um, but in the center, there is what looks like um, a staircase that leads down, just right there in the middle of the floor where the, the big boulder previously was. I think we go that way. Uh, yeah. Baston and Squints will take the lead if we can go side by side. If not, I actually will step in front if Baston will let me. 
Yeah, should should I light my torch? Is it a dark? Uh, is it dark down there? And that it uh, is dark. All right. Yeah, I, I feel like I'm going to take out my torch and my flint and kind of uh, light it on fire so that uh, we can kind of see as we go down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as you enter this tower, um, like the wails and the sighs, they get louder. Um, and it's 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 kind of like one of those things where you've been so used to it um, that. You know that that it's just right there in the back of your head, um, just back, just in the back of your head. And unfortunately, like as you get to the staircase itself, looking down, you light the torch. It goes away. All right. Do you all wish to descend? Well, clearly, fire. Represses ghosts, so sure. <laughs> yeah, good. absolutely. That, that's the only thing I can assume that means. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Fire beats ghosts. Fire beats ghosts. So. And rock um, beats Ursula. So yeah, yeah, uh, and and this is a it's a kind of a long staircase. Um, you all start you know going down. Um, it, it's almost like the climb up the tower, like you've started to descend. It feels like forever. But eventually, with your torch, because uh, I assume again, best on you're in the front, right? Yeah, you got. Um, you you start to see an end towards the stairs, kind of like levels out, and uh, opens up to a room, and this room, you start to see what looks like bones like you're like you're 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 still walking down the stairs um uh, descending and whatnot you see what looks like bones down at the bottom as you get to the bottom you can see that this room to the left and to the right there's lots of bones just kind of scattered about mm. look at the bones there's a lot of bones here don't eat them <laughs> can we you see what kind of been. yeah but you know what I put in my mouth? I, I put the uh, squint's uh, toe knife in my mouth. I, uh, yeah, you might what's... need to clean that out. That's fine. Yeah, everybody um, has a toe knife. Yeah, can we uh, can we tell what kind of bones these are? Uh, yeah, yeah. Go ahead and roll me. Um, go ahead and roll me an awareness. Oh, I rolled a dragon. My first one. My first success. This whole nice <laughs> show. <laughs> Finally. And it comes to bones, probably the most worthless role that we'll have to do tonight. And I was the most epic at it. So as as you start, uh, like you you get down, and it kind of makes sense, you know. You're like you're you're the first one down. You, why does it make sense? Because I'm a dog. Is that why you're saying? <laughs> what are you trying to say, Mister Dragon Bane? I believe he's giving saying, a dog a bone. I'm just saying you're wow. the first one down there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. As, cool. it, you know, as you start rifling through, you you start to find like. Like decrep, uh, like um, almost dusty clothing, um, like kind of meshed in with the bones. Um, there's there's some other things, but as as the whole party gets down there, and you're like, you start to grab for something, you hear this feminine deep sound. Was it you? Did you re did you did you move the boulder? And if you all wish to uh, look to see where that sound is coming from, uh, complete opposite of the stairs, uh, this room itself is, it's roughly um, like 12 meters by 12 meters. And you, there's like the stone altar that's like to the side and whatnot. Um, but right next to the stone altar, you see this ghostly figure of a, a uh, proud orc female standing in front of it. And I say standing loosely because like, as you're looking like at the feet, there's no feet. It's kind of like hovering there, like above the ground. Was it you, Wolfkin? That moved the boulder? Did I? Uh, yes. Did I stutter? Did you move the boulder? I, I, I didn't. Uh, no, no, that was uh, that was a kind of a group effort. We were all kind of I mean, 
we did technically didn't, but we gave the person that did motivation. We motivated the guy to do it. So in a way, we kind of did, but we kind of didn't. Hmm. I'm trying to be as vague as possible here and trying to give you whatever answer you're trying to go for. I mean, so in a way, we did, but we also didn't. Hmm. Well, and as you say that, you can actually see, and actually the rest of you will see this as well, multiple like floating orcs will start to appear side by side, like every couple seconds. This this seems like this must be a holy place. So I mean, there was a hole in the wall earlier that we went through. So it's done. It's done. But, but I guess I don't have to thank you then, puny, puny kin. But thank you regardless. Whatever you may have done, I suppose. I don't know. You you talk really weird. Uh, but Just try smelling him. We, I take we, out my uh, perfume and I spray him myself no! a little more because <laughs> you're still holding the torch too, right? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Like it, 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 it. yeah. Um, and they kind of like the the one in uh, the one that looks like the leader kind of steps forward a little bit. I am Acha Bonebreaker. You. Uh, Again, you talk weird. I, I don't know if you're the one that did it or not. Or even, no, the dwarf. The dwarf cannot. Uh, the mallard, no. Mallard, uh, elf, no. None of you did this. Nobody. I mean. None of you could have. Look, look at this right yeah. here. But thank you all regardless. You, we, we have now been freed. We've been trapped down here. Oh, no. That's horrible. We were told that if we freed you, great rewards would come to us. Why don't you have feet? Shh. Squints. Shh. Why don't you have an eye? Why do you well, have like, ast asinine so questions? So great rewards. I'm trying to like <laughs> drown out the others. Well, if it comes to a fight, Bliss is going to be in trouble. Her, her number <laughs> one target isn't even a vi viable option here. I'm not so, going to fight these noble warriors. They're going to go out and kill Ursula. You'll you'll <laughs> actually hear several of the orcs start talking, but you cannot understand what they're saying. Uh, if the merchant would like to roll a languages, well, anybody yes. anybody can roll languages, actually. Yes, okay. uh, I I do believe I've heard some uh, orc talk in my day, so I'll roll languages. Nope. Uh, ah, it's all orc to me. I was not successful. I got a 13. So Squints, you alone will hear this where it's 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 in a very, very old dialect that's kind of spoken. Um where it's basically like, you know, uh it's like two orcs off to the side talking to each other. You know, I'm sure they can uh, treasure, like there's not much treasure, but they could probably just have what's around our feet like their feet like if they just look down they could probably just have that treasure that's around their feet i will i'm gonna try to do it subtly but it will fail miserably because squint's not a subtle person i'm gonna look down at my feet and what am i seeing i mean where's my this is where if we were in person I would allow you all to. Ah. Oh, yeah, look cards. at that. You've got some cards there. Do you want to give us each a card? Do you want to draw us each a, a card? Well, not at this moment, but oh, all right. All right. You, you, you know, squints as you're looking down, you can make out like what looks like some books, uh, some shiny earrings, maybe some rings on skeletal fingers. Uh, definitely see some weapons. You'll definitely see what looks like some coin purses maybe so uh squints will take a like a half step forward and i will try to speak in flork as best i can um and i will say <laughs> that i am a chronicler of knowledge and i would be honored to take down the story of how your 
demise happened at this tower? Was there a mighty battle? Were you betrayed by by enemies before you go into your eternal reward above? Could I could I sing your songs and write your stories for ages ahead? As you start to speak in this older dialect and whatnot, um, the one that kind of was stepping forward and talking and everybody could understand looks right at you. In fact, they all turn towards you, specifically squints. And uh, Akcha will uh, kind of address you. You speak old, old orc dialect. Uh, impressive for puny, puny dwarf. Impressive. I'm a, I'm a scholar. I did not come by it naturally, but I thought it was it was worth learning the language of such my, mighty and powerful warriors. Now, everyone else, you have no idea what I'm saying, and you have to assume that it's bad. <laughs> you know me. This is bad. I'm making things worse. So s speaking in a tongue that everybody understands, we'll straight up point towards the elf merchant. And while looking at you squints and mm. say... Uh, we we will bestow treasure upon you for your great deed. Um, kind of just ushers the hands out and says, first, you may have what was on us before we passed. Uh, do as you please. Okay. But um, again, just very, very quickly, um, as a scholar, is there like, would I know to like tell my friends, like, don't take those. That would be an offense. Take these. They would consider that as like a, you know, an honorable choice. Is there a certain type of weapon or anything that I don't, I don't want to do any social faux pas. And it looks like bliss has already taken everything. So as I'm trying to decide, it doesn't matter. Well, I'm actually glad you brought that up because Akcha will actually point towards the wall. Um, it's kind of off to the side. If you look, there's this giant orc banner. Um, and we'll kind of say, this is the banner of Takruk. One who holds this banner. If, if strong orc commander goes into battle with this, this banner, they get a boon to their roles. But if a puny, weak dwarf like yourself carries that banner into battle of clan to rock, you give orcs a bane to their roles. That is a powerful totem. Thank you for that knowledge and wisdom. It, uh, it, it, it has been handed down the to rock clan. Take it with you if you wish. But S then in turns and as, as she starts to turn, the um, 20 or so ghostly figures start to walk towards you all, past you all even, starts to head towards the stairs going up. Do they walk through us? Because that's really creepy. <laughs> Straight through you. <sighs> but she stands there still. She turns and looks at the altar and says, there's a spring right there and you can actually if you happen to look um where the altar is like just inside of it there's a small basin where like water is slowly trickling in mm -hmm. it says this is the fountain of truth drink from it and swear an oath that cannot be broken that is the orc way be strong like orc or you can stay puny like your kin. What? I'm not puny. What? Look at these. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> Squints, are we are we good here? Like, what? Can can you fill us in here? Yeah, I'm doing great. <laughs> oh, dear I lord. Okay. I don't think he's doing great. Keep keep him busy. I've almost got everything that's shiny. <laughs> so at that, Akcha will start to walk towards the stairs. Um, she'll specifically walk through you squints and then go up. And if anybody happens to look up the stairs by chance, you'll start to see where as they take like 
four, five steps, they start to disappear. Okay. So I, I will then turn and uh, and speak back in the common tongue and g give the squint version of what happened. Uh, there are no vast sums of treasure to be found, but there are relics uh, from this past battle. Some of these weapons might be enchanted. We'll have to get those tested. Uh, but there, that banner does bestow boons uh, upon those who carry it honorably and banes against those that it is held against. And apparently there's a water fountain over here that if ah, you drink it, oh, you, you can't cool. lie. Can, what? what? Can, I, can, can I go to like the, the fountain and get down and just like... Oh, 100%. <laughs> just, just you know, start licking it like a, just, you know, drinking it like a dog. Yep, 100%. Awesome. Now you can't lie anymore, Baston. <sighs> you got to tell the truth all the time. Dang it. Why do you keep putting all that perfume on? Because <sighs> I stink like a dog. Oh, my oh. God, it's a curse. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... As you all, uh, again, uh, well, Bliss, as you were kind of rummaging through the ground and whatnot. And I, I kind of strode the cards uh, across the table and kind of pulling out. So we've got 4d6 times 10 copper. Uh, I'll let you all decide who wishes to roll. We also have 2d6 times 10 silver coins. four copper and bliss because you were so quick and eager to start getting into the treasure i need you to roll evade for me Ooh! oh no 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 all right i i, I can evade I can, I can maybe evade watch your feet whatever's in here must go after those <laughs> two i got a two all right so Apparently as my, were, my really oh, bad luck from my D, D group last night is now Standing me in good stead. I'm telling you, if you and, and this is for everybody watching, if you have dice that roll low, use it in Dragon Bane. I promise you will succeed. It works. Now I've granted you a curse, and it will not. So exactly. Uh, <laughs> you uh, as as you were rummaging through, you found a rusty nail, but at the last second, you pulled your hand back. You take no damage. And then the last card, uh, fourteen gold. So. Ooh. I don't okay. know who wants to roll the uh, the coinage, but I that guess. is that is your all's treasure. All right, uh, I will take the banner. I will, as best I'm able, take it down and treat it with reverence and roll it up. I don't personally have any like true interest, but I'm sure I can find a collector or historian that would want it. Or you know, I'll do the it belongs in a museum and uh, try to make sure it gets put someplace in a place of honor. Okay. So looks like uh, sixteen copper, nine silver, um, and I there was two cards that added four gold and sixteen gold. Okay, nice. Uh, so not a bad haul, not not a total bad haul. But yeah, I mean, once we give ten to Ursula, we still got two each. What? <laughs> We're not giving her anything. I thought that's what we agreed upon. I'm altering she the agreement. Tell me anything. I'm pretty sure she's feeling a little flat towards the whole thing right now so what do you all wish to do you all have freed um some orc ghosts found some treasure and uh taken a nice long sip out of the uh dog bowl no i'm gonna i'm gonna take some of the water and put it in a flask that i label do not drink to use as okay. poison later okay I'm on the search for new boots. So oh. I guess I'll take my share and go buy some, some new boots. I mean, you, you can... Mm. I guess I need a new toe decker also. That one... <laughs> yeah, it, so. yeah. But, I don't, you know uh, what? If, if you wish to have a dagger, I'm sure there's one down here. Ooh, so I, easily have a dagger. I'm so, I came out so ahead on this yeah. mission. It's yeah. a hooked dagger. It has a little hook on the end. So you can oh, yeah, get right it. in there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if if you all decide to ascend the stairs by chance afterwards. Oh yeah, we'll check out. Uh, the I thought we stay down there all night. Maybe tomorrow. <laughs> no, yeah, we'll go up. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, and as you all like rise and whatnot, uh, the stairs again. It takes a while. 
uh, but it's properly dark out. Like you all get to the top, the first floor, um, you know, there's nobody in there. And as you look out the entrance of the tower, it is dark. So no plan, 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 have plan. I didn't hear what you said. Clam glam anywhere? Not at, not right here within the tower itself at, at the moment. Yeah. I mean, do we just want to spend the night here? I mean, probably should. It's probably more safe here than anywhere else. Yeah, because the other choices are to go to the camp, which is not great, or to go out into the um, haunted swamp, which is not great. Also not great, no. I mean, you could you could probably go back down the stairs where you found all the, the ghostly orcs and camp down there if you wish. Uh, well, I don't really think... Oh, well, there's a perfectly yeah. good camp down there. We probably just have to move some bodies. I don't like that. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to stay in the tower up up, yeah. up 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 top. You know, yeah. I, we just freed ghosts that have been there for millennia. I just... Something about sleeping where they were doesn't seem right. So yeah, yeah. I feel like yeah. that's squints, squints on the nose of this one. <laughs> yes. Uh, so as as you all go to make camp and everything like that, you'll light a small fire. Um, we're essentially at the end of the scenario. You all have successfully. Um, now, I will say successfully. That's also because as I'm rolling on my side for various things. My roles were not coming out well for me. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that Dragonbane does really well is encounters, random encounters. And it, it, it's it's like whenever I, I don't know, just uh, must be first time on live streaming YouTube. But even still, shy. even still, it's not rolling what I needed. So you all did not get to encounter uh, several different things as far as little creatures, monsters of the night. and But you all did successfully negotiate your way through the camp, um, talk to Glam Glam, convince Glam Glam to take care of Ursula and Fetter and Reich and the Aww, others that were with him. Actually... Squints, you um, you saw two because with your far sight, you did mm -hmm. see two people. Yeah, I need an odds or an evens. Ooh. Now I'll roll and whatever I roll, I'll say the other because that's how my luck has been. So we'll go with evens. Okay. You know what? It was not fetter. Mm. So mm. potentially, potentially there could be somebody down there potentially all right that'll be that'll be the uh the part two quest is can we find fetter in search, <laughs> in search of fetter in, in search of fetter uh, you have always been and always will be my friend to find but, fetter <laughs> but yes thank you all for coming along this journey of uh the tower of size it's actually one of my uh it, like i said it's becoming one of my favorite adventures within the uh, adventure book um but there, there wasn't really, and I apologize, there wasn't that many roles uh, because you all were able to kind of navigate your way through them without having to do things. But then again, I was also failing on my dice. So it worked out for you all. I got yeah, to I, stab two, people, two feet. Yeah. You did. You did. <laughs> and, and that I is say, truly a feat to be admired. <laughs> it's a feat to, be be to behold. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, for me to be trying something really hard and to draw uh, to roll a dragon on it, like that felt really good. So, like yeah, sure. I think, like you know, mm -hmm. that I can imagine running this for for players and just that, just this cheer erupting at the table where it's sort of like it's like really high stakes. You really want to get it, boom, dragon. Um, yeah, I, I think because uh, a lot of people that play TTRPGs or especially new people to it they're used to rolling over mm -hmm. and you know, when people roll that one, they're like, Oh darn it. I rolled a one. And they're like, wait a second. That's a, that's a one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like you see this, like I, because I've, I've run, like I said, this is a session 76 for me of dragon Bane. Okay. So I have seen uh, countless faces where people are like, Oh, oh, I rolled it. Oh yes. But then, when they roll that 20, they're like, I rolled a 20, yes. And they're like, 
oh no, that's not good. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah, so, I, oh, crack. Uh, <laughs> there's my f bomb for the night. <laughs> I, I I love how we went through this whole scenario and like there was conflict, but there was no combat. Like there was like we never had to like there was never an instance where where we had an, had to draw initiative, um, which I, I think Dragon Bane does really 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 well, mm -hmm. but. You know, it's like nice that it's not like the primary focus of, of well. Uh, this and system. I rolled to see how Ursula, which in in the book her name is Ursic, but I like the name Ursula better, so I, I run with it a little bit. Um, you know, I rolled to see how her response would be to, you know, you taking that knife and right into the foot, and apparently she doesn't like Reich that much. My dice decided <laughs> she does not like Reich that much. So, so she, was she was like, you know what? Okay, I'll let you have that one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I actually was like, please, somebody control uh, Bliss, because she did say if I threw a knife into somebody's foot again, there would be a problem, but there's plenty of hands on her. <laughs> you know, um, so... Under the law. So I'll tell you, uh, uh, out of the times that I've run this, I've had multiple different outcomes. True. I've had people uh, try to fight the entire uh, bandit camp. Um, I've had players try to fight Glam Glam himself. That did not go off very well because, as you can assume, Glam Glam just grabs somebody and chucks them to the air. Um. <laughs> And, and also, you know, uh, one of the things about Dragon Bane, which as a GM, I don't know what this says about me, but I love this aspect. Monsters auto hit. I don't have yeah. to roll for them to hit you. All I have to do is roll to see what attack they do. Hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 an, it's a very interesting mechanic. And, you know, I'm very much a narrative person, a role player. And, I mean, honestly, some nights... My dice fail me, don't get me wrong, but there's some nights that they've done miraculous, wonderful things. Very cool. All right. Well, uh, that's going to, yeah, that was, uh, the, that was a great session. Uh, yeah, I, I had a lot of fun. Uh, everyone that, uh, that joined us in the chat and watched live. Thank you so much. Uh, if you've watched all this way and you haven't already please hit that subscribe button uh and if you enjoyed the session of course hit that that, that like button down below uh dragon bane is out on retail shelves mm -hmm. now it's uh it's a really great box set mm -hmm. and it's pretty much an rpg experience in a box yeah it's got standees dice uh rule book adventures solo rules so you can play it all by yourself mm -hmm. if you want to um just uh some some tactical masks as well so a whole bunch of of product in there for 49.99 is that's the msrp uh so yeah take a look at it if it's something that uh, that you're interested in let me know in the comments if you pick it up and, yeah. and if you like this session uh before we sign off though i want to give everyone kind of a, a a way to acknowledge where, where maybe folks can find you online uh oh. if you'd like uh let's let's start with kaylee kaylee uh if folks would like to connect with you more online wh where, where would you like to send folks uh, mostly socials. I'm on Blue Sky. Uh, I'm still on Twitter. I refuse to call it by that stupid name. Uh, and TikTok. Please don't do that because that's, <laughs> that's going to give it to you. Uh, you can find me there at Anime Girl, A N I M E I G R R L. And let's see what's coming up for me in the next week. Uh, I'm going to be over at Rook and Rasp's Twitch stream on nice. Sunday or Saturday. And I'm also going to be on the Identico Twitch stream for our normal show next Tuesday for Chaos Incorporated. So very cool, very cool. Brian, uh, if folks would like to connect with you more, how how should they do that, my friend? Yeah, you can find me on the socials like Blue Sky and um, Macedon um, at Brian BPK. Um, you can also, if you look in the um, back catalog of uh, Michael's, the RPG Academy, the sample adventures, you'll find me running uh, Brindlewood Bay and um, uh, what did I run recently? Old like, Gods of Appalachia. Old Gods of Appalachia. Ooh. So um, you can come check out the uh, awesome folks from the uh, RPG Academy and uh, playing. Uh, and I'm planning to come to a catacon and run at least one session of Brindlewood Bay there. So oh. hope to see others there. Okay. 
Yep. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Michael, where, where can folks find you? I, we've kind of alluded to it a little bit, but let's let's <laughs> plug it one more time. Yeah, so I'm at the RPG Academy pretty much anywhere that you search that. If you find it, it should be me. If it's not, let me know. Uh, I, too, am moving from Twitter to Blue Sky, so I hope to be more active there, but I'm still on Twitter. I cross-post everything. Uh, we do podcasts. We do streaming as well. We did, We have a show. The only one I'll plug is called uh, The Sample Adventures. It's what Brian already mentioned, where we... We one shot random games we've never played before using the included adventure or a included adventure like in Dragon Bane because there's multiple um, to see how well it does at representing that game, whether it be from a core book, a setting, quick start, that kind of thing. Uh, So then those get turned into audio only podcasts later. So if you don't catch them live, you can always watch them on YouTube or listen to audio only. I do go through and edit those a little bit. They're a little bit tighter than the the live stream. Uh, And then I'll be at a catacon. The gaming, gaming convention that I am the lead organizer for in November. I think everyone on this, except for Mr. Dragonbane himself, will be there because he'll be doing his own thing in Louisville. Uh, I wish I could. I wish I could. Yeah. Again, maybe next year we won't be on the yeah. same weekends. I'll see if I can make that happen. Uh, but yeah, I'd love for people to come check out our stuff and listen, so, so support us. If you do come to a Catacon, uh, Free League has been super generous. We have two box sets of Dragon Bane. We have an alien box set. We have a one ring box set. Basically every box set they sell, we have one to give away. So show up and maybe you can walk away with one for us. Uh, I have many other things, but I'll leave it there because I'll be here all night playing. Uh, <laughs> but thank you, Mr. Dragon Bane, for because I've been wanting to play this forever. This was absolutely uh, a blast for me. I, I've said this before. Every time I role play, my goal is to roll my dice the fewest number of times possible with zero being the greatest thing so this is exactly the sort of thing i love to do so thank you no thank you thank you and jonathan aka mr dragon bane uh where where can folks find you if they want to connect with you online uh, of course we mentioned that you're going to be at the uh, G- game hole con and uh and pack yep yep i will be at game hole con uh in october i'll be at nerd luvia come where, down where can, where can uh, folks come find down you? or come up depending on where you are to louisville kentucky november 4th 5th for nerd luvia um, but in December I'll be at, uh, PAX Unplugged. Um, I'm running a bunch of stuff. Come connect with me. Let's play some games. Let's go grab some food. But, uh, as far as socials, you can find me, um, let's see, discord, Mr. Dragonbane, uh, no space. Um, actually you can book me as a GM if you wish, um, on startplaying.com and, or start playing game, start playing dot games. And go to my website, themidgarpress.com. You can find me on there. It's a brand new website, still working it out, so be nice. But uh, yeah, come book me, and I'll run a game for you and your friends. Awesome. All right, that is going to do it for this session. Again, thank you to everybody that joined us, and thank you to everyone that has made it this far. We greatly appreciate it. And remember, winning shouldn't be the only victory condition when you get to the table. We'll see you next time. Bye now. Thanks so much for watching this video. This video would not be possible without these people right here, the names that are on the screen that uh, you're seeing scroll by. Those are all our generous patrons on Patreon. They help keep this content flowing. Uh, and if you'd like to have your name added to that list, check out our Patreon. Just go to patreon.com backslash Victory Condition Gaming. We have a few different levels. Uh, we've got uh, some that you just give us a tip every month and you have access to our Discord, a special role there, or uh, there's even a $10 a month level where I send you two signed uh, limited RPG books uh, a year in June and December. Check it out. I appreciate it. If you've gone all this way and you haven't already, uh, I'd really greatly appreciate it if you uh, hit that subscribe button and uh, that that like button down below. Uh, That helps grow our show even more. And I appreciate that greatly. Thanks so much.